Hi, everybody. Karen Roby and Ed Bott here for ZDNet talking today about a lawsuit filed by three uh, Microsoft customers who claim the company, Microsoft that is, is uh, giving away their business's data. Ed, uh, that sounds pretty explosive if it's true. Well, <laughs> if it's true, hold that thought, Karen, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if, the big if. Uh, so lay it out for us. What, what is this lawsuit about? Okay, well, there's, uh, as you noted, three Microsoft customers. Uh, they all subscribe to the lowest business edition of Office 365, which is now called Microsoft 365. Uh, so these are three individual subscribers who've been paying Microsoft between $100 and $150 a year uh, for these subscriptions. And they, they filed this lawsuit uh, about 10 days ago or so in uh, federal district court, in Northern California. And uh, they want this to be a, a class action. So they say it's not just the three of them, that it's every business customer and that's millions of them. And so they want uh, at least a thousand dollars for every count for every one of those customers. So you do the math and that comes out to literally billions of dollars worth of, of damages that, uh, that they think they're owed because of, of, of horrible things that they're alleging Microsoft has done with their data. And so, Ed, as you mentioned, they have millions of customers here, and, and this is coming down to these three, uh, three groups and whether or not others will join in, I guess, remains to be seen. But what exactly are they claiming that Microsoft actually did wrong? Well, uh, so I, I read, I've read through this lawsuit in detail a, a few times, and it's probably worth noting a, a few things right up front. Uh, first of all, these are not security experts, okay? Uh, the, the three plaintiffs are uh, a lawyer in Napa, California, um, who's been a lawyer for at least 40 years uh, based on his biography, uh, a litigation consultant, somebody who uh, who uh, does consulting for lawyers who are you know, about their ju about jury selection and such, sort of stuff you see in, in movies by John Grisham. And then the third uh, uh, plaintiff is a web designer from, uh, from Southern California. But the accusations, uh, they're, they're fourfold. Number one, they claim that Microsoft is giving their business, is, is giving their business data and specifically their contacts to Facebook. Every time that, uh, that they sign in, they're claiming that Microsoft is sending their data directly to Facebook. <laughs> uh, the second thing is they claim that they're, uh, that they're giving their data to their subcontractors and they just let the subcontractors have it. They don't have any requirements on the subcontractors to encrypt that data or to protect that data. Uh, they, uh, they're claiming that Microsoft is giving their business data to uh, app developers, so that if I write an app for Office 365, uh, then I get to just uh, go out and do queries and pull in anybody's business data that I want to. Uh, if they bought my app, and even if somebody I correspond with bought my app, they say that as a developer, uh, I can I, I just get their data automatically and uh, you know with no with no uh, restrictions based on it. And finally, they claim that Microsoft is taking all of this confidential business data, their email, their files, their contacts, their schedules, and they're using it uh, to develop Microsoft's own products and then sell them to, uh, to other people. So like you said, those would be explosive allegations if they were true. If they were true. Yeah, that's really interesting, uh, Ed. And, and I know you've done some digging here, obviously, to, for, for the background information for the story. Uh, I, I guess the big question is, are, are we going to have to wait, you know, for a trial to see how this is all going to play out or, or what's going to happen here? Well, I've done, you know, I, I have, it was one of my commenters on another article who pointed me to an article that, uh, that referenced this case uh, just a couple of days after it came out. And when I looked at it, I said, this doesn't make any sense to me based on how I understand Microsoft runs its data centers and specifically how it runs its, uh, its business cloud. Uh, you know, this is a $20 billion a year, just Office 365 for, uh, for commercial customers, uh, business and enterprise customers, it's $20 billion a year 
that Microsoft gets from, from those customers. And you, you, know, you sort of wonder, like, why would they feel the need to just sort of just toss that data around at random? Um, and, and, you know, so, so I looked into the, uh, the allegations in specific. Now, this wasn't as easy as, as it should have been, because uh, one thing that was sort of striking about this lawsuit is there are, uh, there are no footnotes in it. Well, there's a couple footnotes at the very, very beginning. But when they get into the, the things that they're accusing Microsoft of doing, they have all sorts of quotes from Microsoft documents, but they don't actually include links to those documents. So I had to go out. I mean, I spent at least a dozen hours researching this, finding the original documents and then figuring it out. So on the Facebook thing, uh, I think this is a classic uh, amateur security researcher misunderstanding something that they read. Years ago, years ago, this stopped in 2015, but years ago, Microsoft used to have a feature called uh, Facebook, uh, the, the, the Outlook Social Connector, and Facebook Connect, Facebook Contact Sync. They had a variety of different names. But back, uh, back between, you know, say, 20, around 2010 to 2015, Microsoft and Facebook uh, had a relationship that was based on an investment Microsoft had made in Facebook. And so one of the things that Microsoft did was they created this software that allowed you as an Outlook customer or an Office customer to, uh, to you know, click this software and say, hey, I would like to join my Facebook context with my Outlook context. And what that did is, you know, if you're, you're in Outlook, you're looking at an email message, you say, hey, um, this, is a, this is a customer of mine and I wanna see what they've been saying on Facebook. Because you know, it, was sort of a, it was sort of a low grade customer relationship management thing. Well, this feature, this feature was eliminated uh, five years ago, 2015. Now, interestingly, the, uh, the, the three plaintiffs in this lawsuit are alleging that all of this stuff started happening in 2016. So this, this Facebook feature hasn't been around for at least five years. And when I went looking for uh, any sign of it today, um, I didn't see it. I couldn't find a, a, a single sign of it. Leads me to believe that it's not there. And what they found was a, a, single, a, a single line from a single support document from a few years ago. Uh, the developer story, uh, that's yet another misunderstanding from someone who doesn't know how, uh, how APIs work. Uh, Microsoft has something called the Microsoft Graph. So if I'm a developer, I can build an app for my customers who use Office 365. And when I give you that app, you can sign in with your Office 365 credentials and you can use the functions that I've coded into that app to go out to your inbox, to your files, to your organization's SharePoint sites, to your organization's shared files and shared calendars. And you can pull all that stuff together in the app. So the way that the apps work is, is, yes, the developer gets to use those APIs, but the APIs are activated by the customer who gets to search on their own data. And uh, apparently these people who are not software developers and not security experts are under the impression that an API allows a developer to have unlimited access to whatever that API is working on. And so that's just a, you know, a pretty bad misunderstanding. The stuff about subcontractors, I mean, that just makes no sense at all. I know how Microsoft uh, works with its subcontractors. Everything that goes out there is encrypted. Everything is anonymized. Very little uh, that is confidential ever leaves a Microsoft data center and goes to a subcontractor. There's no allegation. There's no quotes in there or anything. It's just a bald statement that they make and no support for it. And then finally, in terms of the product development, um, here too, it's just another misunderstanding about how the cloud works. Microsoft, they, they, they specifically mentioned three products. One is the uh, Microsoft Security Graph. Okay, and they say, well, Microsoft has scanned 400 million emails and 700 million Azure files, and they're using it to, to build this product called the Microsoft Security Graph. Well, the Microsoft Security Graph is the thing that prevents people from breaking into your account. It prevents, it allows Microsoft to detect uh, spam and phishing attempts and malware and viruses and block them before they get there. The Microsoft security graph is what I, is, is their way of identifying 
all these malicious attempts to break into business customers' accounts on, on the Microsoft Office 365 cloud. And so the Microsoft security graph is the, the collation of all of this information. And yes, they share it with partners and they get other information from partners, but it's basically a way of keeping your account from being broken into. Not a bad thing, probably a good thing. Um, there's, uh, there's a reference to a product called the Microsoft Audience Network, which is a consumer online advertising platform that Microsoft runs. And it uses the Microsoft Consumer Graph so your Bing searches and uh, you know, anything that you might have done in your free outlook.com account that you gave Microsoft permission to do has nothing to do with business accounts. I'm not sure why that's in there. And then finally, they mentioned Cortana and machine learning in Cortana. Well, yes, uh, and this might be the one where they have sort of a shred of a glimmer of a scintilla of a tiny ray of something where maybe Microsoft could be more uh, could provide more disclosure for customers on what they're doing. But basically, Microsoft does machine learning within your account that, you know, so that they can identify like automated replies to your messages. I send you an email and they can, they can say, sure, I'll accept that invitation or yeah, that sounds great. You know, stuff like that. It's machine learning. But you go back to the very documents that they appear to have quoted from and it's very clear in there that all of that machine learning takes place within your own file, isn't shared with, uh, with other customers, and it's never seen by a human, it's never touched by a human, it's never reviewed by a human, it's just a machine learning thing. So when I got to the end of this thing, I said, there is a whole lot of nothing here. Right. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm actually looking forward to following this case because I, you know, I wanna hear what, um, what these people's lawyers have to say when they're asked for proof about the things that they've alleged here. But anyway, we'll have to see, you know, uh, if this ever gets to court and uh, if it ever gets to a second day of court. Right. Well, yeah, just that, Stephen, see that second day. And Ed, you've been covering, I mean, we were talking about this earlier off camera. You've been covering, you know, been in this for years and covering Microsoft Office, you know, for years and years, and you've obviously never seen anything like this before. Yeah, and, and you know, the real thing, I mean, when you get to the very end of this thing, you say, you know, these people aren't security experts. And, uh, and the thing is, if any of this was true, the European Union privacy authorities would be all over Microsoft about it. They've already busted Microsoft mm -hmm. for minor privacy violations, you know, multiple times in the last five years. These Fortune 500 companies that are paying Microsoft, you know, tens of million dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars a year for their Office 365 subscriptions would, I am sure, notice this because they have, you know, they have, they have security experts on their staff who right. pay attention to this stuff. So I think, you know, there's, there's, um, there, there's a dog here that's not barking. And uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm really interested in hearing how this, how this plays out. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we will certainly be following it through you, uh, Ed, as any developments that, uh, you know, come about. Um, and I know you've laid this all out uh, in a great article, of course, uh, for CDNet. So we hope all of you will check it out there and continue to follow Ed uh, as this progresses. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.